So hello everyone. Uh, welcome to today's session, uh, which is Amazon Q industry demo on our automotive insights. So before starting, uh, let's take a quick look into our agenda today. So we will first discuss about QuickSight and then generative BI capabilities through Amazon Q in QuickSights. Followed by that, we will have a automotive insights demo to go deeper into all these capabilities. And finally, I'll share some of the resources that can be helpful to get you started. Before we begin, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Neeraj Kumar, Solution Architect, part of our Amazon QuickSight org at AWS. Uh, I've been with AWS for more than three years, supporting analytical and BI solution across the automotive and manufacturing. So let's start with our QuickSight overview. We define uh, QuickSight as our unified BI platform on cloud serving all analytics needs. So QuickSight is basically purpose built on a serverless architecture. You can easily subscribe to QuickSight within AWS and then you can connect to your data, uh, be it a direct query or by importing data into a Spice, which is our super fast in-memory calculation engine, uh, providing the high performance and auto scaling, all that is built in. And once you have the data set built from there, you can create insights and share with your, uh, your stakeholders. Generative AI capability within QuickSight is a new excitement. And we have features with generative AI, uh, something we will see in detail today. Since our launch, uh, the lower cost has been our focus. And with pay as go model, we are helping our customer adopt QuickSight at ease. Uh, so now let's now dive into how QuickSight can help organization power data-driven decisions across all your, the users. Uh, in each of the areas that we talked about, unification, high performance, and our investment in machine learning and AI. Before we get into the specifics of Gen BI and Amazon Q in QuickSights, I wanted to share our vision. Um, our vision looks like overall, we wanted to make QuickSight the preferred choice for all our customers to deliver insights to every user in the organizations. And we have three layered approach to this. Uh, in terms of how we deliver the first is that the underneath layer, uh, where we have got all great auto scaling capabilities and it comes with the cloud economics that is simple to manage. On top of this, we have built support for these core analytical workloads. First being the modern dashboards that users can interact with and they can filter and they can display the visualizations, uh, drill through uh, as needed or they can perform any actions that is required as part of any kind of interactive dashboards. Second is our pixel perfect reporting that a lot of end users can get the multi-page pixel perfect reports. We have great integration with machine learning and natural language query capabilities that can help you build uh, any sort of uh, automated augmented analytics. Um, we allow forecast anomaly detection and building custom narratives all out of the box. We allow embedded analytics for consuming the QuickSight insights directly into your enterprise portal, or in case if you have any external facing web applications, uh, which can give more of a seamless experience to all your end users. Finally, the data stories, which is a new asset that we introduced recently. Users can now create the narratives on top of their data and they can share those with their other stakeholders within the organizations. And finally, at the top, we have Amazon Q capabilities. Uh, we have been working on Q within QuickSight for a long time. And of course, that broadens the base of individuals who can actually interact, in, interact with these different workloads as we make it super easy for end users to use the natural language while interacting with QuickSight. Having all these BI capabilities consolidated in a single service is great, but um, being honest, uh, the dashboards and reports have existed for decades and users still struggle to gain insights from their data to drive any sort of decisions. So what frictions do they face? So according to an often cited Forbes article and from the Gartner report, um, staff shortage and uh, the lack of data skills are the number one impediment observed for analytics success. Uh, with 75% of business users still not feeling confident in their data skills. And about roughly about 68% of time being spent by analysts on reshaping data and basic, basic analysis. 
So with that keeping in mind, that is where uh, AWS developed Amazon Q, which is a new type of generative AI powered assistant and it is designed to work for you at work. Q will let you get answers quickly with natural language interactions. You can just easily chat, uh, generate the content and take actions, all informed by an understanding of your systems or your data repositories and operations. We have basically five key focus areas in Amazon Q. Uh, understandably, like first is the Amazon Q business, which can help connect to your company's information, be it a repository or any kind of enterprise system artifacts that you have built in and help answers those questions around them. Uh, through Amazon Q Developer, uh, we can basically transform the way we build, deploy, and operate the applications and workloads on AWS. Uh, through Amazon Q in Amazon Connect, um, uh, your context, which can be your contact ser center service and can help your customer service agents provide a better customer service by automatically providing the agent responses, maybe the suggested actions, and they can link them to the relevant articles. And Amazon Q in AWS supply chain will can help um, with the supply and demand planners or could be the inventory managers. Today, as part of this session, we are now focusing on Amazon Q in QuickSight. So let's go deeply into that. So diving into the specific capabilities of Q in QuickSight, uh, which is also called as generative BI, uh, it basically combines QuickSight's work in Q with the new large language model capabilities which are available through Amazon Bedrock and can provide the generative AI capabilities in QuickSight. First is a set of capabilities focused on more on enabling the analyst uh, to build the dashboards and report faster. Next is focus on the storytelling which is basically allowing the business users to share the findings in presentation ready formats and to aid the decision making. And third one is more around enabling the users to quickly ask and answer questions against their data, more of a search queue search capability. Lastly, many of these capabilities can be embedded into your own custom facing products and internal facing applications. Let's take a deeper look into each of these capabilities, uh, first being for the author, so as a business analyst, uh, uh, if you wanted to um, leverage and build your dashboards, this is where the generative AI capabilities are added to our analysis view. It is super easy to learn and use. Uh, you, you as an author will be able to build the new visuals and then refine them further using the natural language descriptions. You will also be able to create calculations by simply typing in what you are trying to calculate. While these dashboards are, um, while the dashboards are providing you the aspects of data, all the aspects of data, it can be uh, difficult to sometimes quickly extract the most significant piece of information from it. And this is where our executive summary feature that can help create a summary of all the key aspects which can be shared on just a matter of click. Um, now there are time, um, we have seen the content on the dashboards can trigger related questions and you can get them by interacting with dashboards like maybe filtering or could be a drill down, uh, drill up or drill down. Um, however, there will always be a question that the dashboards can't fully answer. Uh, rather than have the users request new dashboards and overload the BI team, uh, we have users, you, we have now the users can simply ask their questions to Q. Q will provide multi-visual responses along with the natural language summaries and provide the alternate exploration choices as well. We have seen the business users spend a lot of time uh, extracting data insights from our dashboards uh, in order to create the presentations for their stakeholders. And to that end, uh, they, they often end up copying and pasting the visuals into various documents and that are shared outside their BI systems where governance is no longer enforced and insights can get outdated soon as well. So we have now the new stories capability in QuickSight, which can help um, the business users interpret the data and share insights through compelling narratives. 
uh, stories can bring together um, data-driven insights, more of a real-world expertise and, and artificial intelligence all built in, all framed within an engaging design. These are all the aspects that we will learn in demo shortly. Um, before uh, starting with the demo, just stay, uh, talking about the several benefits the, uh, these capabilities bring. Uh, I've, I've just discussed about them, um, but in a nutshell, um, the one is like it will reduce the time needed for the business analysts to build the dashboards, which, which might be taking an hours. Now it can be done in minutes. With the use of natural language, uh, the business analysts can now access the business insights in seconds because they have access to the data. They can just query the data and get the responses. Um, there's no new skills, skills required to build any kind of a dashboard or create the stories. Um, this can be done now in a matter of few clicks. Uh, very quickly and easily, and it's enabling the self-service insights for all the stakeholders. And that's what we will see now in our demo. It's time to see all these capabilities in actions. And um, let me switch to the demo and bring up my QuickSight console. If you have used a QuickSight, so this is again a QuickSight console. If not, you can easily subscribe to QuickSight accounts. Now, once you are subscribed to it, QuickSight accounts, as I mentioned earlier, you can connect to your source. Um, maybe if the source, if you have a uh, data in the CSV or Excel, you can just upload it. Or maybe if you have a data in the Redshift or any other third party, let's say Snowflake, you can just connect to your source and uh, create your data sets. So as far as an author, um, the first thing we'll do now is to select some data uh, and we, we, which we wanted to analyze so we will take a data, which is a car sales data, and this represents sales of a various model of a fictitious car company, which is called as Quick Motors, and it, uh, which is providing its sales, doing its sales across the different geographies. Now, uh, looking into the data, these are the attributes. Um, we have order dates, like when the order has happened, and who was the sales representative for that order, in which particular country or city or region the sales has happened, and the corresponding customers and what the models has been sold what is the model type for that for the for the uh, for the car and who is the make the what is the make of the car so which is a quick models in in here uh, we have the wind details and some of the other fuel type and fuel efficiencies details like if you wanted to build any insights around that we will leverage this particular data sets uh, for our use case and create our insights. So let me just take uh, this particular data sets and uh, let's uh, ask now and create a first analysis. When we cre create an analysis using the data sets, um, now here I can ask Q to build a visual and that can be something like a top selling car models or so. So first, uh, let me just clean up um, this analysis. Let's keep start clean. Um, we have on top the build visual, as you see here. And this is where I can ask a questions. Maybe now total sales by model. And say, um, ask you to build a visual for me. You might have seen that it has interpre interpreted as total sales by model. Sales is my one of my metric model is one of my dimensions. It has created a visual on a fly. I can add it to my analysis, um, and now I can resize, um, and I can see on um, what are my top models. So seems like Q1, Yoho, Edo has been performing uh, rightly on a sales. Let me see if I wanted to see look at the monthly sales how it has been going on. So I can ask a question now to Q. Again, seeing that monthly sales trend, let's say, and see, and build, uh, ask you to build a visual for me. As you see, it has created a monthly chart. And again, if I wanted to edit um, as part of my, uh, I wanted to create a forecast, I can just go and edit the forecast as well. Um, I can also do it as, as we build it again from the queue itself also. So when I'm here, building this visual, I can create a, add a forecast, enable the forecast that I'm looking for, and again, add it to my analysis. So as you see here, I see the monthly sales trend. Uh, 
it seems like I have I had a maximum sales in November 2020 22 and then correspondingly looking for forward into the future like it has given me 14 months forecast as well also like if I wanted to look into a different um, a different visualizations I wanted to create maybe now look for sales for models across a different region or so and maybe now I wanted to create a more of a Sankey charts so let's take an example of saying sales for model across region as maybe a Sankey and let's ask you to build this visual for me you might see now in a matter of few clicks it has created it has identified what my matrix are what my reach what are the dimensions categories i need to use it so it has taken the region sales and model into the factor based on the question that was asked right um, now let's create a um, maybe maybe we can, we can do start looking into some more areas so now as part of my insights that I wanted to build. I also wanted to see the sales and profit by maybe a region. So I can say sales and uh, profit by region. And let's say I wanted to also use a sub region. Now I can see, ask Q to build my sales and profit uh, for all my models um, across the regions, how it is performing. Uh, so based on the region and subregion and sales and profits, I have got my response and I can add my uh, this to my insights uh, to my analysis and resize to what how I need to be. Now further to that, now I'm able to create a visual. Now I would like to refine this visual and maybe now I wanted to create a and do a kind of a conditional formatting, maybe. A, I want to highlight the sales or maybe a profit based on certain business rules I wanted to add. So let's say now ask, let's add, refine this particular visual and maybe now let me add a conditional formatting maybe on a profit. So let's say I say color red when profit um, is less than could be, let's say I, I make it as 200K. I can provide that and apply that. So now it's going to look into my profits and identify um, whenever the profit is less than that particular range, it needs to, it should highlight. And you might see that it has done the conditional formatting. Likewise, I can refine the visuals that I need to. Right? Uh, let's explore some other capabilities. Uh, as an author, now since I have access to the data, I've used this data sets, which is my, for my fictitious Car, car sales company called Quick Motors. I'm looking into all my uh, sales across the models, across regions. <laughs> also, I wanted to create um, kind of a calculations. And it could be, since I have looked into the data, I have the monthly sales trend. Now, let's say I wanted to go further up and look more of a quarter over quarter percent change uh, in sales, how it is performing over the quarter. So in, to do that, I can create a calculations. This is where the generative AI capabilities in the experience where you can now uh, on a fly, you can create a calculations using the generative AI capability. I can just specify what my uh, calculation should be. So let's say I say quarter over quarter and uh, I can say build calculations. And this is where I can define what my, I can provide my uh, calculation, what I wanted to build. So let's say I wanted to build quarter over quarter percent change in sales and ask Q to build it. Now Q is looking into my matrix, what I have done provided. And this is where the large language models is identifying what would be the right fit calculation for me. So based on that, it has identified period over period percent difference is the one it has identified that quarter is the grain i wanted to aggregate it at quarter level and do the the comparison of the quarters and i didn't define my quarter over per percent change in sales right this is how you would build a calculations imagine like if you were building any kind of a calculations um using identifying those right syntax and all it would have taken a time to identify what would be the right functions and how the syntax works how the grain works 
but using Q, you can easily do it in a matter of few minutes. Now, since we have built a calculation, I can do, I can insert it here. I can save that as a calculations, and now that will appear as part of my analysis. Uh, I've got my calculation built. Now I can ask Q2 leverage this calculation that I built in and create another visuals. Let's say I wanted to say uh, quarter over quarter. Um, maybe I wanted to say um, by, again, I wanted to show it by quarter, this metric by quarter, let's say. So in that case, it will look into my, this particular calculations I've used, and now it has created a line chart for me, which and again, I can add it to my analysis, right? Hey, Niraj, can you just really quickly show how you make the Q sidebar come up on the right? Just to clarify that, we had a question. Um, the On the sidebar on the top, um, you can just create, when you click on the build visuals, it just appears automatically Perfect. for you. Thank you. Yeah. Just want to make sure that was addressed. Sure. sure. Thank you. Now, as I have created this particular visual uh, using the calculations, now further, if I wanted to show it as more of a bar, I can just see and refine that particular visual to a bar. Right? So it can change the, the line chart into a vertical. Now, these are the questions that you can easily ask Q, right? There are times when you would uh, basically uh, would like to do a lot of uh, detailed comparisons and maybe deeply in, uh, ask a question which basically uh, can have a different semantics. And this is where you can easily link to your topics. Topic is again a data set that is built in QuickSight, um, which basically uh, focuses on a subject area and help um, understand uh, any kind of a questions that the users is asking, more of understanding all the semantics behind the questions that users ask. So this is where you can link to a topic. Um, so now you can, I've already created a topic as auto insights, and I can link to that particular topics, and which is here. But if you have not created it for your use cases, you can easily create the ins just a topic from a data sets that you want to do, or maybe a set of data sets that you're looking for. Now, once the topic is being created, linked uh, to your analysis, you can enhance this um, experience of asking a questions. So for example, if I wanted to, because there are many times you would create a, uh, you might define uh, a, let's say sales could be a revenue, right? If you ask a queue without a topic, if you ask sales is revenue, it may not leverage that because it doesn't understand what the revenue is. But within the topic, you can define all your synonyms where the topic can understand each and every pass through each and every questions and can help provide the responses to it. So now let's say I wanted to compare, um, I've, we have looked into all these models. Let's take an example of um, any of these models like Q1 or maybe Addo or Rainier, and I can ask a comparison of monthly trend between just focusing on these two. So this is where you know, I can ask a question to Q where we can say uh, compare monthly sales um, for Addo. That is my one of my model, and I can compare with another model, which is called Rainier, let's say. And you wanted to show it more of as, let's say I wanted to show it as a vertical stat bar chart. I can ask Q to uh, use this particular calculation and then um, leverage the topic and create an insights. You might see now, uh, this is where the topic is essentially very helpful. Understanding deeply like all the uh, questions that you have asked. So again, uh, understanding all the intent behind that and mapping it to the right entities like sales order date, and then also identifying that you're looking into the vertical stack bar charts and you can add it now to analysis. So further, uh, you, can, you can just create these kind of a set of insights as needed. And once you are 
done with the, all the insights or maybe you are performing actions or maybe let's say you wanted to create, a, update the theme for this one. Let's say you wanted to update that, you can just update to a respective themes and you can just in a matter of few minutes, you will be able to create your analysis and using all the generative BI capabilities, just leveraging the queue on top. And you can just publish that as a dashboard and share it with the stakeholders. Right. So this is how the very first example that we shared, like how the AI powered dashboard authoring can be useful using the generative AI capabilities. You can uh, create your dashboards very quickly, our reports very quickly. Once let's say uh, we now explored from the as an author, also the other generative capabilities that we talked about, uh, let's go deeply into that. Now, as an end user for those capabilities, as an end user, let's say you have access to a particular dashboard, right? As a business users, uh, basically I want to be able to extract the insights um, here about my business without the help of IT or BI analysis. Uh, I can also, I also need to be, I, I would be able to take these findings and present them in a highly formatted document, which can convince other team members and leaders to take actions. Um, so here are some of the various metrics of automotive insights, something out of, out of the possible, something you can build it as part of your um, uh, dashboard story. So this is the automotive insights uh, dashboards that we have. So let's say you have built this particular dashboard and shared with the end users. Now looking into it, what the users can do, business users can do, and how they can leverage the generative AI capabilities. So let's explore those capabilities. So now let's say you have um, these meaningful insights now, and these are there's a lot of data to consume here. The first thing I can do is now I can ask Q to build uh, me an executive summary, which will extract the, all the key insights, and that may spark some additional questions. Like for example, I can go on top uh, now as part of that, you might see a build and you can click on the executive summary. Now it, it will look into, it has looked into each of my insights. You might see that in a matter of just few, uh, on a click, it has created a executive summary for me. It has linked each and every narrative that has created, let's say top three sales I have. Uh, it has identified from my, my top 10 sales representative and all these links like top three models and then top sales peaked at 25%, uh, 24.5 million in November. So it has all created these insights using um, all the visuals that has been built. As you might see, when I clicked on here, it has highlighted that, giving you more reliable analytics for end users to know that uh, the queue has built this executive summary, this particular narrative, uh, using this particular visual, uh, using the monthly scenes trend, it has created this narrative. Now you have all the narratives, custom narratives that is built or the summary that has been built. And this is where um, you can just take that as it and you can start just copy it to clipboard, you can share it and send it across as an email to your stakeholders. Something now it is very uh, easy to do on a matter of just click. Now, once you have these executive summaries, besides that, just uh, uh, since it is an automotive dashboard, uh, you can you can allow as a, any kind of interactive dashboards. Um, users can still filter out um, any, let's say they wanted to see a data for a specific region, let's say Americas and Europe, so they can just filter out as you would do it uh, while you wanted to interact with any kind of a dashboard or maybe drill down or you wanted to perform any kind of actions. Um, you want to do, let's say, navigate from one sheet to another. For example, here I have a highest year 2019. We have the most number of recalls reported in this example. Now, I wanted to further look into the recalls, right? I can go click on that particular recall. It can navigate me to my another sheet within my interactive dashboards. And this is where I can look into uh, what my insights are. You might see now I have number of recalls happening and these are the types of recalls happening. Like some of them have been done by the visibility recalls, some of them happening by the airbags recalls, likewise for suspensions recalls and etc. And let's say I wanted to look at 2020 is now I wanted to just click on 2019 and now matter of just a click, it can just update all my visuals here. As you would see, I can see now 
the airbags was the num has the most number as the second most and the exterior lightning recalls is the most number of um, the recalls that has happened and that has caused it. Now, which particular model? It seems like Addo has the most and Rainier is the second. Let's say I wanted to take a look at the Rainier first and I can just click on that and matter of few minutes, I can definitely get into the details of what, um, what are the different types of recalls that has happened. Uh, I can get to those and then specifically which particular model and when it really happened and what was the notification uh, date in one when, when it happened and how many units got ex expended right further if i have any uh, wanted to create kind of a, any alert around that like i should be notified let's say whenever my whenever the the recalls happens and uh, it's beyond 1000 i can just matter of i can just create an alert here specifying what my threshold should be and i should be notified in my email so you can build and do that as part of your interactive dashboards as such. Moving on, like you can build as part of your, as you're building your automotive story, insight stories, you can easily um, create your sales reporting views that you would generally look forward to with all the conditioning that you wanted to do. Um, maybe a period over peer growth, you wanted to highlight that. Um, you can specifically, you if there's a need to create any kind of pattern reports, and this is where, like when we initially called, I, I started with the overview I mentioned about the unified BI experience. So within that same dashboards, interactive dashboard, you also can create the pageant reports and you can schedule as to your end users as needed. And you can send it across to your stakeholders, this particular multi-page reports, right? Um, now, as part as I'm looking into this particular report, there might be still a questions as an end user when, when I'm looking into it. So the one of the questions could be um, like, uh, as you might see that on the dashboards on, on this particular report, I have the sales declining in Latin America. So seems like number of cars has declined as part of this report. And looking into this particular report, I have that question. And now I wanted to understand a little bit more. One way is basically you can uh, look into a different KPIs or visuals that has been built as a dashboard, drill down or filter through those or uh, if it is available in the dashboards, or you can ask directly uh, to a queue. You can just open up a queue on click uh, on, on, on top, and then you can just ask a questions, like why my sales has declined for that particular region. So in this case, let's say I wanted to look for why sales decline um, in Latin America, which is the one in March, 2023. And um, this is the question I posted it earlier. So that's why it is showing up in my history. So let's say I post that question now and within a matter of minute, now you might see it has done a contribution. Q is doing the contribution analysis. It is identifying like what all key drivers are, which are playing a key role in the sales decline for that particular region, right? Seems like Suze was, uh, was a sales representative and seems either he might have moved or to a different department as, uh, and that could be the cause or it could be another reasons, but seems like the sales for Sue has declined by 100%. So he's no longer working for that particular region. And also looks like he was looking for, uh, he was working in a particular city and he was looking for models and seems like his top model, um, the Edo is the one he was assigned to or maybe he was working on a different campaigns. Something to look at, like if I wanted to go back, I can just pick any sort of, any 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 other key driver and look into the specific details. Like, is there any particular campaign on uh, which Sue was working on? And is that somebody I can assign somebody else um, so that my sales gets increased again, or I can move on with my sales segment. So this is where I can easily identify, I can look into why my sales is defined, what are the key drivers to it? And then once I know that I can take an actions on top of it, right? So this is how you can get into it. Further to it, like as a business user, I would like to also know, okay, I know the sales, but then I also wanted to understand uh, how my monthly sales is been happening, right? Across the Latin America. And this is where I can ask again a question uh, monthly sales in Latin America, let's say. And again, I type in a question and ask a queue. Queue is now going to look into my data. And based on that, now you might see it has created a, a new set of insights, which is now, it's not a single visual. I got a 
kind of entire dashboard with multiple related slices of the data. Uh, you might see that uh, monthly sales trend is coming. I would now I can see the customers who are tied to uh, Latin Americas and uh, who are who are basically for him the sales has happened and also the order details. Also on the left side, if you see, it has created a narrative uh, short summary. All this short summary also has basically, if you see, it is underlined uh, all the matrix that it is being done, which is basically you can look into and identify which particular visual it has created this narrative, right? So it seems like the significant decrease in sales has been identified from um, the monthly sales trend. Likewise, looking into the subregion and all, it has identified the lowest monthly sales for the subregion has happened. And likewise, uh, the other areas like Dan, Gran has contributed the most to the sales. So looking into that particular, so giving more reliable analytics to the end users, understanding that um, this data uh, doesn't have any kind of hallucinations in that. It's more of uh, based on the data and based on the, the semantics that they have provided and based on the question they have asked the queue has interpreted answer and then accurately provided them the response now all that is there so now monthly sales in latin america has come up now let me just uh, look into any let's say i want to also look at um, any identify any particular customer for the model for which uh, in latin america which sue was working on so let's say i wanted to know top customers who bought Edo in Latin America and maybe reach out to them <clears throat> if to identify any kind of uh, challenges they have seen. You might see though, again, it has created the multi six inch, inch visuals and it has given me how many unique number of customers are there for Edo in Latin America. Uh, what the total sales looks like based on the questions. And you might see the interpretations, how it, the queue has done it. It looking into the matrix, like filtering out the specific data accurately and for a model that you are looking for and uh, grouping it by the category that you have defined. Based on that, you have get you have, we have received uh, uh, multiple visuals, which gives me all the insights around the customers who bought the Edo in Latin America, precisely giving me, also giving me uh, suggestions on that. Like, are you looking for unique number of customers for sub-region Latin America in case if I'm looking for a different frame of questions. So this is where Q can help you scale your uh, capability to look into uh, your data deeply and uh, get the insights uh, quickly. Moving on, let's say uh, you wanted to take on these customers and you wanted to inform, uh, let's say all these top buyers who bought model, um, these might be something worth pointing to your leaderships in your next monthly uh, business review or so. Uh, you, you, let's say you wanted to create a document or maybe a kind of a slide deck um, would have taken uh, from a scratch would take hours or even days to accomplish that. Um, this is where now the data stories can help us get, um, create a more beautiful narrative that can contain all the key insights and and also can provide the recommendation that can help drive decisions in that meeting. So as now, let me go into the data story and show you how you can build the data story quickly. So you on again, on from the build, you can click on the data story. As you would do that now, this is where you can provide your context. Um, you know, the question that you have, um, and this is where uh, you can provide what you're looking for, what kind of a story you wanted to build. So let's say I wanted to build a data story, maybe on the sales performance and so, so I can create or write a data story. I can provide my prompt here, so write a data story, um, highlighting. Sales performance and uh, and provide, let's say, a recommendation for any long-term growth. And while I provide this prompt, um, I can also add a set of visuals from my dashboards. It can be from a multiple dashboard or it could be from a same dashboard, but it could be multiple visuals. Like from here, I can pick some of the set of visuals 
uh, on which uh, I wanted to create a story. So maybe I can pick some from summary sheets and some from detail sheets. And let's say I wanted to create a, a story around that. Uh, now, this is where like using the prompt, looking into, as I'm looking into the data story, highlighting the sales performance, and also looking into any kind of recommendations that you can provide me for long-term growth. Um, Q is now looking into all the set of visuals that you're providing and also the prompt. And based on that, it is, it is, it is going to recommend a story for you. So now, as you see, within a second, um, Q has built an amazing starting point with a complete outlining, including um, the, if you see here, it includes the introduction here, the header, the introductions. It has also looked into the sales trend, um, all the the visuals that I provided, creating the all the narratives. And if I wanted to further uh, create any kind of, a, let's say I wanted to create a more of a short summary, or I wanted to create any kind of a, um, long term long query or maybe i wanted to create a um, change it to a bullets so i can basically change into any of these formats make these expand these narratives or summarize or maybe change into a bullets all these insights is being created based on what i provided and based and the use and this is where the queue is providing all the accurate information to you which something as a human in loop coming in you can validate certify what queue is providing to you and if needed, let's like say you can review all these insights and recommendations. So basically, we provide ask the recommendation. Looking into the market market trends, it is providing you all the recommendations as part of the automotive industry. Now, as part of that, if there's a need to create further any kind of a comments, or so you want you wanted to build or maybe add any particular visuals, you can add a visual, or you can add an image, or you can even provide your own annotations here and you can add your comments once it is done you can basically change the format on the themes as currently we are providing with a set of five themes which are accessible to you and you can change the theme and make it more uh, beautifully interactive and which can and more polished and and once you have that ready, you can um, share these business context um, to any of your end users. So you can just, on a matter of click, you can just provide the username who you wanted to send it to or create to. So right now, as a business analyst, I've created it. Now I wanted to create it, uh, share it across my organization. So I can just publish and share this entire story. So everybody in the organizations can take a benefit of the story that has been built. And, it can, and, we, and we can further refine on that. So rather than spending more of eight hours or so crafting this document, um, we are now able to create this polish and business context uh, of my own and have this ready in a, share, in a fraction of the time. Uh, so as you have seen uh, with automotive insights, um, how the generative capabilities of Amazon Q in QuickSites can help both your analyst as you as initially we were creating the analyses using the queue capabilities um, asking those questions and adding based on the responses adding it to our analysis uh, and created our dashboards um, quickly also as a business users we can uncover or drill down into and share the key insights with others in the in order to aid on data driven decision making moving on to my slide uh, let me back to the tag here so these are the resources um, which can be useful to further explore these capabilities we spoke today um, we have these using the generative bi with amazon queuing quick sites uh, 